Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum and good morning everyone. In our today's session, we will be focusing on proximal lesions of the posterior teeth and we shall learn how to perform aesthetic restorations in these clinical manifestations of carious lesions using dental composites. Uh, despite significant improvements in composite systems and adhesive systems since their introduction, posterior restorations still require a careful placement technique in order to avoid uh, microleakage, post-operative sensitivity, or less than ideal anatomy. Marginal adaptation and microleakage prevention is most critical at the gingival margin which is determined by the extent of lesion itself. The formation of an adequate contact during the insertion of class 2 resin composite uh, can be particularly challenging as the lesion extends more gingivally. In more superficial lesions such as this one, uh, it's comparatively easier to manage because of its relationship with the interdental tissues. Size of the lesion is directly related to the prognosis as uh, matrix adaptation is easier which can securely engage and provide optimum seal at the gingival floor. As the lesion size increased and as it extends more gingivally, the more challenging the situation is. As the preparation is enlarged, Resistance form as well as bonding variables must be kept in mind during preparation, matricing and restoration. Because uh, whenever there is some kind of root involvement, there will be some bonding issues because of uh, less mineral content. Maybe we are trying to bond on a cementum and the root dentine already has very less mineral content and higher collagen content so that's why there will be some bonding issues uh, next will there will be some isolation problems because whenever there is a class 2 lesion depending on the size there are some inflamed papilla interdentally and these inflamed papilla uh, produce exudate the inflammatory exudate which can interfere with the etched or uh, newly prepared surface. Another variable is the depth of light penetration in these regions. If uh, the depth is greater, there will be lesser chances of a proper light penetration and hence there will be less degree of conversion. And because of less degree of conversion, there could be some uh, problems with the bonding or there could be some uncured composite there are chances of secondary lesion as well as post-treatment hygiene maintenance problems because uh, there are chances of overhanging in this region as well. To build up the proximal wall and the insertion of class 2 composite restoration requires proper matricing for a good contact formation. Hence, correct use of enamel and dentine etching bonding steps and incremental placement of the resin composites and careful finishing is extremely important. Anatomically correct and tight contacts are difficult to achieve with resin restorations because resin composite materials are not condensable like amalgam. Uh, the use of amalgam matrix bands like flat matrices uh, for composite restorations generally leads to a straight point contact that are located in the occlusal third of uh, the tooth which leads to under contouring of the situation as you can see in this illustration if i'm using a flat matrix it is it is not going to create a contoured proximal contact so hence we are getting a flat contact which is not ideal uh, remaining under contoured restoration will lead to over stimulation of the tissues uh, the matrix systems for composite materials are designed to create curved proximal surfaces and tight contact areas. Uh, these are generally comprised of thin contoured matrix bands and a tooth separator. Uh, you can see that it is creating optimum contours in the proximal contact area. So after restoration, uh, it is producing an anatomical contact 
which is an ideal contact. Talking about the indi indications, uh, these are almost the same indications when I were doing a composite restoration in the posterior region. Uh, again, small and moderate restorations, uh, preferably within enamel margin, is uh, advised. Most premolars and molar restorations, particularly when the aesthetics is in high demand. A restoration that does not provide all the occlusal contacts uh, is generally weaker. Uh, and uh, a restoration that does not have uh, a higher occlusal contacts or the pa patient is uh, not suffering from any parafunctional habits. A restoration that can appropriately isolate during the procedure. If you cannot perform adequate isolation, there is a very bad prognosis of these kind of restorations. Uh, some restorations that may serve as foundations for crowns and some very large restorations that are used to strengthen the remaining or weakened tooth structure. When the operating site cannot be appropriately isolated, I told you that uh, these are among the contraindications because if you will do the restoration, there will be minimal um, uh, curing in the gingival region. There are chances of bone failure in that region. So it's always contraindicated that you use some other materials such as you can try um, a sandwich technique by using resin modified in these areas prior to use uh, any composite. Uh, whenever there are some high occlusal forces be because of parafunctional habits, um, uh, this is among the contraindications. Uh, patients who are having high carrier susceptibility and uh, the patients who are with poor oral hygiene, the composites are contraindicated in these situations. So again, whenever we are talking about the advantages, uh, aesthetics is the number one advantage followed by um, we are not uh, removing a lot of tooth structure as we are trying to do in amalgam which requires uh, a strict geometry in order to get ideal retention and resistance form and with composites it is a easier and less complex tooth preparation and since we are using bonding system uh, it is providing insulation and the composite itself is an insulating material uh, there is a decreased chance of micro leakage because of use of bonding adhesive system and we are also reinforcing remaining tooth structure by using composite and adhesive dentistry. Among the disadvantages, if not used carefully, uh, there will be some polymerization shrinkage effects, uh, some po post-op sensitivity or debonding if uh, uh, you have not followed all the recommendations during uh, the preparation and uh, etching and bonding uh, process. Uh, with some materials, there is a low fracture toughness and uh, it is quite a technique sensitive and time consuming as compared to amalgam and uh, it is also uh, expensive than amalgam uh, so these are among the disadvantages so uh, the problems with composites for use in class 2 restoration is number one uh, it's difficult to it's not impossible but it is difficult to achieve moisture control but if you are using rubber dam you don't have to worry about that and in deep subgingival extension areas, uh, adaptation of uh, the matrix band and deep margin elevation, and these are all difficult procedures to attempt for. So, next we'll discuss the clinical techniques for class 2 composite restorations. As you know, the shade of the tooth is the most important parameter when aesthetics is the paramount. The shade of the tooth should be determined before the teeth are subjected to any prolonged drying because dehydrated teeth become lighter in shade as a result of decrease in translucency. Minor or no tooth preparation, it may be necessary to clean the operating site with a slurry of pumice to remove the plaque pellicle and superficial stains along with the calculus deposits if there are. Knowing the pre-op occlusal relationship is paramount for optimum restoration. So we shall mark the occlusal marks before any restorations. 
local anesthesia should be provided to make more pleasant and uninterrupted procedure. <clears throat> it also resulted in marked reduction in salivation. Isolation is extremely important for a successful composite restoration. Although with cotton rolls and other means of indirect isolation, a composite restoration can be performed, but it's highly unpredictable. In this pictorial, <clears throat> you guys can see uh, there's uh, wedge application in the teeth. Each mat matrix band should be secured with a wedge. A wedge is needed to maintain adaptation of the matrix to the tooth and the gingival margin to avoid the overhangs and prevent adjacent tooth from getting nicked with high speed handpiece. Excessive wedging forces are unnecessary when an additional tooth separator such as rings will be used. So insert wedge where the embrasure is wide, from buckle to lingual or from lingual to buckle. Coming towards the benefits of the wedging, or the pre-wedging will cause slight separation interdentally. It depresses the interdental papillae. It controls hemorrhage, prevent oozing of cravicular fluid. It seals the matrix gingivally and it also ensures the tight contacts. think before drill so we'll coming towards the tooth preparation uh, wedging of the proximal contacts to prevent the adjacent tooth and to prevent the overhangs in the restorations creating access to the faulty structure with your high speed handpiece removal of the faulty structure convenience form for the restoration and then the retention is obtained by the bonding. Tooth preparation <clears throat> for class 2 has decreased pulpal depth of axial walls which allows greater conservation of tooth structure. Occlusal and proximal wall converge occlusally and provide additional retention form from the vertical movements. Proximal box preparation has a cavo surface angle at right angle to the enamel surface facially or lingually. Bevels are given on the occlusal surface and that are optimal due to the that are optional due to the direction of enamel rods, whereas proximal surface beveling must be done prudently. Gingival floors should clear the contact apically and they should be bud joined. After the tooth cavity preparation, the matrix system is selected based on the operator preference the cavity location and the size. If the contact is not open during the tooth preparation, then conventional matrix materials may be simpler to use rather than the curved matrix bands and the separating rings. If you are using a Toffelmeyer retainer, then always pre-burnish your band using a ball-ended burnisher to create a slight contour at the contact point. Otherwise, it will create a flat contact which is under contoured again and are not ideal. In larger cavities, a circumferential band can be chosen over a sectional bands. Ultra thin curved or self retaining circumferential bands enhance the ability to form tight curved contact areas and should be used rather than the traditional circumferential amalgam matrix bands in a Toffelmeyer retainer. If the tooth is in irregular position and embrasure shapes can sometimes prevent seating of the ring. It is useful for a dentist to have a variety of separating rings with different tine shapes with round or rectangular cross sections for a better fit in some buccal or lingual embrasures. When a matrix system and a separating ring is used, the matrix position should be verified prior to the application of the morning agent and resin composite material. A properly matrix tooth should no gap, shows no gap along the gingival margin between the tooth and the matrix band. The problems with the matrix use always pre-contoured matrix to form a proper contact point. If you use a, a straight matrix it will also make a flat surface and it will retain it like under contoured restoration. 
your matrix should be passively and shouldn't deformed. If the matrix is deformed, again the restoration will be deformed because you're going to pack in the restoration when it's been matrized. Always remember your matrix retainer tines should be inserted below matrix and the wedge to hold the tooth uh, from the transitional line angles or the spots. Let's discuss some uh, clinical aspects of class 2 uh, restorations. Class 2 is a challenge. Why it is a challenge? The reason being is uh, what I feel in my whole clinical practice that to find an actual tooth is a problem. Patient complains that food is trapped but most of the times when you examine that situation clinically the ridge remains intact. So to find a real culprit is a problem for the dentist. For that you have to evaluate class 2 cavity in five different aspects. But before examination, you have to ask the patients to have some scaling in the polishing. As you know that poor oral hygiene is a leading cause of the class 2 cavity. So with lot of calculus and the plaque, you cannot examine. You can miss some details during examination. So after scaling and the polishing, what five factors you have to evaluate? See any redness and inflammation around that area. That indicates there is some food trap areas there so it leads to inflammation of the gums see any roughness of the tooth surface that is only possible if you dry the tooth and the surrounding tissues do floss to evaluate the contact points then the next thing is evaluate if there is any discolorations like in that picture there is a visible discolorations on the mesial aspect of the molar but the ridge is 100 is perfectly fine so you have to evaluate all these things and the final you have to go with the bite wing radiograph that is a recommended radiograph for the class 2 inspection. So as I told you that in previous slide uh, there is a black discoloration on the occlusal aspect. So when you open the cavity there is a visible carious lesions. So you need magnifications and you need proper evaluations with drying of the soft tissues and the dental heart structures. What is an ideal contact? As we know that in posterior teeth, the contact is on the buccal sides and at the junction of the occlusal and the middle third. But here, the contact between two premolars is good and but the contact between premolar and the molar is full of defects. The ridge is intact but there is a lingual carious lesions. For that, because that area was just filled with some plaque. So when you ask the patients go for scaling and the polishing then that area visible to you. So you have to follow the protocols. Like that one that's a very clear picture. There's an open contact and the food trap is visible there. When there is food lodgement there is demineralizations and that demineralizations leads to demineralization of the dentine and then enamel gets unsported and then fracture with mastications which is recommended burr for class 2 cavity preparations that's a round burr round diamond and round carbide but remember that when you prepare the occlusal surface always use a small round burr with a high speed handpiece but when you go deep close to the pulp when there is a chance of pulp exposure always use a small round but in, sm in slow speed handpiece with air water spray and if you feel that the tails are compromised you cannot evaluate a deep part of the cavity stop the water coolant use only air coolant so that the main purpose is just to cool the dentine and uh, avoid overheating of the dentine what is the best way to isolate in a class 2 cavity the picture that's a visible here it's anodontic cavity it's occlusal cavity for that you can isolate a single tooth but for the class 2 you have to isol isolate multiple teeth so that you can work freely because if you isolate a single tooth, you cannot uh, make a cavity or uh, in proximal sides and you can adapt the matrix. So best way is to have multiple teeth isolations and the clamp that is good for the restorative dentistry is wingless clamp because it's small in size and it gives you a space for better performance of your dental work. As you see that when there is a one wall missing, it's an ideal cavity, it's easier to restore because you have the neighboring 
premolar is there that guides you about the height of the marginal ridge and helps you in the adaptation of the matrix in a better way. So it's the easiest one but they, these are very uh, rare in clinical practice because when there is a class 2 cavity on one side possibility there is a cavity on the other side as well. Like that one when two teeth need to be filled uh, it means that two uh, different teeth different walls are involved so you can pass the matrix at the same time and with the wedge at the same time and build them at the same time no problem in that but here is a challenge here is a problem because two adjacent walls are missing you don't have any guidance from height of the marginal ridge so here is a problem here you have to build one wall at one time so the wall that you have restored it guides you in building up of the second wall and here you have to pass the two matrix at the same time but build one wall at a time remove the matrix and then shift your retainer to the next wall so it gives you a tight contact but if you try to build both walls at the same time what would happen there might be a space in between the two two teeth that leads to poor contact and then there's the same complaint of the patient again and again there's a full lodgement so try to understand you have to build one wall at a time when you when you have a cavity in the adjacent teeth the most important thing in class 2 is to close the cervical contact that's the most important thing because when the contact is open there is a problem with inflammation secondary caries and then there is a contact is open it leads to uh, marginal leakage as well so to close the cervical contact you need a tight wedge tight wedge and it must it should be a wooden wedge it should not be a plastic wedge because it can slip away and if you don't get a tight cervical contact you can use a bigger wedge or tie a teflon tape on the wedge to make the contact tight a lot of colleagues ask me can we build the proximal wall with the flowable composite the answer is no the reason being is flowable is a very soft material it has poor strength so it can fracture you need a packable composite here in building of the proximal wall because packable has more filler content it is stronger as compared to the flowable ones so let's see a clinical case of class 2 composite restorations a 30 year old female patient presented to me with history of food trap between upper first molar and second premolar the tooth are almost covered with calculus so before any examination I advise the patient to go for scaling as we know that patient most of the times they argue that they are only visiting you for the restorations and they don't need any scaling but to evaluate a lesion in an area with a lot of calculus difficult for the dentist so please always ask so after examination the next step is to prepare the cavity for cavity preparation the most important thing is you have to pass the interproximal wedge because interproximal wedge helps you in protection of the soft tissues and also prevents the drilling of the adjacent tooth and remember that the wedge the good wedge is wooden and it should be triangular and you have to pass the wedge from the buccal side to the lingual side depending on the space available in the embrasure area so next thing is you have to open up the cavity I asked you already that you, you can use round diamond burr on the occlusal surface uh, with the high speed handpiece when you go down use a round diamond but in slow speed handpiece and try to use air and water coolants but if your details are compromised you can use an air coolant as well here you can see that cavity is still dirty is a lot of demineralizations and you cannot bond the composite in that cavity the reason being is the collagen is denatured and uh, there is a demineralization so the composite cannot bond perfectly so you have to remove all of the caries the next thing is uh, I pass the rubber dam why I, not, why, not, why I not use a rubber dam in my previous slides the reason being is uh, the contact was quite irregular so when you try to pass the rubber dam in irregular context rubber dam sheets can be tear off so better to prepare the cavity open up the proximal context and then pass the rubber dam so here the cavity is still dirty and uh, there is lot of uh, soft caries there we have to remove it we have we don't have to leave any caries there because that caries is a weak part of the tooth that can lead to debonding of the composites so here you can see the cavity is very clean there is no demineralization left there 
is not dark caries enamel is sound dentin is sound that's an ideal cavity to restore with the composites and always remember that the contact should be open between premolar and the molar for the passive placement of the matrix because the wall of the the shape of the wall of the proximal site is always dependent on the shape of the matrix but when the matrix is deformed then the shape would be deformed so you have to place a passive matrix and the shape of the matrix should be preserved so next we just pass the two matrix simultaneously and interproximal wedge in between and we will build one wall at one time and uh, as you see in the picture the tines of the matrix retainer should be in between the matrix and the wedge so we will fill one wall and then we will remove the matrix from that wall and shift the matrix retainer to the next next tooth so here uh, one wall is constructed no the matrix tines have been shifted to the molar and always remember that uh, you cannot build the two walls simultaneously the reason being is i told you already that the thickness of the matrix can lead to the gap in between the two two molars so one wall at one time and remove the matrix and shift the tines to the next one so here uh, the class 2 has been converted into class 1 so now we have to restore the central part now so the base of the cavity should be filled with the flowable uh, around about 1 mm increments and then remaining part of the box should be filled with 2 mm increments of the packable packable composites and we just did the occlusal part uh, cusp by cusp so the occlusion of the patient is a, is a priority for a dentist it should be preserved occlusal part should not end into a flat restorations that can create a problem in mastication so here is a post op situation uh, the very well adapted composites the contacts are the tight and there is no uh, carious lesions visible so that's an ideal contact that helps the patient in the mastications and then there would be no uh, food trap in between the molars so that's a, so after doing a uh, clinical work uh, the next thing is to evaluate your work with some radiograph that radiograph helps you to evaluate your proximal contacts and cervical part of the restoration that remains open in most of clinical situations when you don't adapt the matrix well so that radiograph helps you to evaluate the performance of your uh, restorations so guys uh, at the end of the lecture i want to uh, recommend you few things and bite wing is a recommended radiograph for class 2 you cannot take a periapical radiograph to evaluate the carious lesions as we know that periapical is only good for periapical area it don't tell you details about the carious lesions and the extent of the restorations so bite wing is a recommended one and the second thing is use a round diamond and round carbide for the cavity preparations i told you already that when you try to open the occlusal cavity uh in the occlusal surface you use a round diamond in a high speed hand piece but when you go near to the pulp always work in a very precise way need a round diamond but in slow speed hand piece and always drill the cavity in a brushing actions don't drill 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 okay and then important thing is that you always prepare a cavity with air and water spray but if you cannot visualize the details so you can just close the water coolants and just work with the air coolant so next thing is don't prepare cavity with oda wedge that's very important thing because interproximal wedge not only protects your soft tissues but also protects the neighboring tooth during cavity preparations because most of time what happens when you don't use a wedge you can drill the adjacent uh, well adapted tooth that once once there is a drilling so there is a process of demineralization starts so you have to avoid this thing and the wedge should be wooden it should be triangular it should be tight enough but if the wedge is not tight you can wrap wrap up the wedge with some teflon tape then the most important thing is always use a pre contoured matrix for class 2 restorations because shape of the matrix resembles the shape of the proximal wall don't use a toffel mire because always ends in a flat restorations and the finally guys nothing is a challenge until you work 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 and you have to work for the rest of your life
Thank you, guys. Uh, let's start off some discussions regarding class two. Uh, Dr. Zuhair, I am always concerned about uh, the gingival area of a class two lesion. What are your thoughts about this Thank situation? you, Dr. Gashif. Uh, that part is most difficult to restore. Uh, the one important aspect of that thing is it's very close to the gum. There is, there is a salivation is there, so difficult to restore that area and you know, difficult to pass the matrix in that area. And sometimes the cavity is so deep that you have to go with some gingivectomy to expose the margins. And, and sometimes uh, the gums are also inflamed yes. because of food packing. Yes. And you know that in that area, cementum uh, is exposed. There is no enamel and dentine. So the bonding is weak. But we don't have any choice. We don't go with an amalgam. We don't, we don't go with the glass enamel cement. So composite is the only choice we have. But we can improve the bonding by just going with etch and, and then we have to applic so multiple so applications technique. of the uh, bonding agents to, to get the good bonding here. So uh, bonding was only concern uh, till yet you mentioned Dr. Zahir. What are the other concerns we have to talk about in this zone specifically? Like the flow of the composite, can we pack the composite so deeply in such a restoration? And the depth of penetration of light. Yeah. So yes. The curing, yeah. The curing oh, itself oh, oh. because yeah. uh, uh, the composite in the gingival area tend to become under cured yeah. uh, because of improper light direction and uh, the degree of conversion is also minimum because of uh, the duration which is used for the curing. So uh, that's why trans curing is recommended. Yes. Cure it from all the sides. All the sides. So my idea in that situation is why not we just go with gingivectomy on the first day and then let the gums heal or we can raise the flap and then expose the margins and not then the just... the full flap in my humble opinion doctor. So we can go with mini flaps or cautery is the better option. If you can just cauterize that area to control the... With lasers or electrosurgery. Electro yes, any, any any option you want to take, there's no problem. And what, but are, your, what are your comments, uh, Dr. Zohair, for the bonding? Uh, when we usually apply the bonding agent, it get accumulates in the proximal area. And uh, it interferes with the composites for the proper adaptation. As the uh, book of operative mentions, we have to uh, air the bond until the ripples get forming. The waves get forming. Otherwise, a thick layer of bond is there. No, that will be uh, easier to degenerate. Doctor Dilawar, you you can apply multiple coats coats of the bonding agents, and then make them thin. But we have to evaporate the solvent. Yes. Yeah. That is important. So you get that a thin layer. You get a thin layer. Okay. And the, and the and the fourth important thing is that you have to you have to be very good in matrix adaptation in deep areas. A difficult job. It's not an easy job. In, in, indeed, uh, the wedging itself is uh, sometimes you have to modify the wedge. So sometimes the contacts are too tight that you have to pre wedge in order to get some space. Which sometimes comes in between the cavity and cavity preparation. So you you need to trim the wedge as well. But that uh, wedge is important for the matrix adaptation because it's a custom wedge. Even after so trimming the wedge, when you're drilling a class 2, your wedge also get accustomed custom. with your preparation. Exactly. It's drilled with the cavity preparation. that wedge is important while restoration because that is copying the previous yes, image. Yes, it can adapt well during matrix application. Easy to place and yes. provides uh, um, optimum force for the matrix. Not unnecessarily uh, huge force is being applied. Dr. Gashi, what I realized that uh, to find the class 2 lesion is a problem. Most of the times patients will visit us and they say we You're have right. food traps there. That is that is maybe because of lack of availability of the latest uh, equipments like a radiograph. Another reason uh, could be that the marginal ridge remains intact. Yeah. And the patient, whenever sees in the mirror, it only sees that, yeah, my occlusal and floor is intact. And even some GPs, Dr. Kashi, even yeah. some good, uh, general practitioners, they just have a look and told to the patient everything is okay. Uh, no cavity has been seen. So the proper clinical examination is mandatory. The culture of dentistry in Pakistan is that we just do the fillings, what patient complain. But if there's a lot of uh, calculus deposits there, we don't ask the patient to go for scaling. We just do the filling. Right. So you cannot fill the dirty environment with the, with, with the composite restorations. Just well, ask the patient to go for a prophylaxis first. Then yeah. that area is clear to you. You can and evaluate composite in Composite itself way. is contraindicated in these situations if the patient is poor having poor oral hygiene yeah. and a lot of calculus. Yes. Why you are doing composite in yes. this situation? But once there's a plaque and calculus deposits, the, the material, might be you made some come to important you with details. Alba and the soft tenacious deposits. Yeah, you're right. You might miss some important details when you're examining uh, with heavy calculus. Hmm. So, for that thing, I mentioned in the lecture that five important things. Red nets around soft tissues uh -huh. and pass the flaws. Do bite wings. 
and evaluate and discuss the issues. Yes, yes. yes. Bite wing is important. Can you explain important. the point of floss? You uh, explain something very tricky about the floss. Yes, when there is uh, the contact is not uh, regular, you know, the yeah. floss get tear off. When yeah. you pass the floss, it get tear yes, off. Yes. You get so, fibers yes. coming off the floss. Yes. yes. And don't ever try to explore with a sharp probe. No, never. You can cause cavitation. Yeah. From and reversible to irreversible. Uh -huh. No, it's so irritating situation. Patients complain they have irritation after eating because they use some toothpicks mm -hmm. and needles even mm -hmm. to clear that area. So it's a very challenging thing to restore class two. On the piece of new papers. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Some people told me they use new uh, currency notes to clear yes. their proximal contacts. Sometimes they visit us and we will take some uh, thing to clear that area. So that's not an easy thing uh, to evaluate and not easy to restore. Uh, there is one more thing that about the unpredictability of class 2 is about uh, is uh, the way we are doing indirect means of isolation, not using rubber dam at all in the gingival area. Yes. So uh, can you uh, predict the prognosis of such restorations, Dr. Dilawar? That is basically unpredictable. And we cannot make things pred predictable, which are absolutely unpredictable. Thank you guys for your valuable time. And I hope you should have <clears throat> listened the whole discussion in the lecture. I hope so. Thank you.